Hey guys, in this DIY gnome tutorial, I'm gonna show you how I made this adorable gnome family. I mean, look at how cute these little three baby gnomes are. Adorable, and this is the mama gnome here with her flower on her hat because she's just so cool. And then you have the papa gnome up here, serious with more hair. Anyway, they are so cute, and once you download the printable pattern, I'm gonna show you exactly how to make it. So go ahead and download that pattern and let's get making. So I'm giving you three patterns. One for the Papa Gnome right here. So you're gonna tape them together, pages one through six. Then the Mama Gnome patterns right here, only four pages, tape them side by side. And you're gonna tape together the Baby Gnome right here, like I have. Anyway, I am gonna put together the Mama Gnome in this tutorial and doesn't matter which one you make, the instructions are all the same. They're just different sizes, but the exact same pattern. And these are all the pieces that you're gonna need. And here are the fabrics that I'm gonna use for the Mama Gnome. So I have a corduroy, a thin sort of printed can canvas, and then I have like an upholstery there. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to actually trace the body gnome and I need three of these pieces on the wrong side of the body fabric that I chose. You can do this any way you want. You could pin it down and cut it out. You could cut right along the paper pattern. It is up to you. But I find this most comfortable for me. I don't know, maybe because I'm left-handed. Anyway, I'm gonna pin it together and cut. Remember, you need three of these, just like the pattern says. Now I have my three body pieces and in the same manner, I am gonna cut out the bottom of the body. And now for the hat. So I have my fabrics right sides together and I'm gonna place this pattern where it says fold line right up against the fold line of my fabric. Remember, right sides together. This time I'm just gonna cut right along the pattern. There's one, and of course I gotta cut another one because the pattern does say I need two of them. Loving this DIY gnome tutorial? Why don't you subscribe so you could stay up to date with all my videos? Just click on the link on the upper right corner there. So I've gone ahead and cut out the four hand pieces there that are right sides together. So I just wanted to show you, you need one this way and one that way. So I folded the fabrics right sides together. So you cut once and you get two pieces. And I did the same thing with the legs. You need four legs as well. Fold it right sides together. I'm gonna hold it still. So if you're not sure and you'll make your pattern move, definitely pin it down. But I'm gonna trace with my pencil here. and I can see my tracing, and I never cut without pinning the fabrics. So I cut once and I get two pieces. And they're right sides together, so I won't even take them apart because they're ready to be sewn that way. And I'm gonna repeat the process so that I have four legs and foots. Well, that's what I call them, a leg and foot piece. But you know what I mean. And now I'm gonna use the same method for the two soles that I need. My corduroy fabric is right sides together, of course. And don't forget to cut these little snips for marking points. So here's what you're gonna need. The bottom of the body, the three body pieces, the two soles, the four hand pieces, which are right sides together, and the nose, only one, and the four leg and foot pieces, which are still right sides together, and the two hat pieces. That was easy. 
Okay, so what you're gonna do now is fold these and sew the darts, okay? So right sides together, fold them. And then after they're folded, you're gonna sew the curve so that you attach them and you're gonna keep repeating this process until the, all the attached and then you're going to sew the last two curves together. It's pretty much common sense. So I am sewing the darts here with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And now I'm gonna sew the first curve. I'm definitely backstitching on both ends. Again, a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm gonna repeat this process until they are all sewn together. Back stitching on the ends. Now that they're all sewn together, as you can see, the bottom is the part with the, where the darts are. So what I'm gonna do is tie the ends of the darts here, two knots, with that leftover thread and trim it clean. I'm gonna do this to all three darts. <laughs> And now it's time to sew the legs. So I'm gonna sew down this curve, pivot down and down this curve, and always back stitching on the ends. Same thing to the other leg and foot. Now that they're done, I'm just gonna give a little snip off of this little point here. And now I'm gonna fit this with that little snip as my marking point. I'm going to match it up and fit it right there where the seam is. So the seam and that little slit that we cut before, they're gonna match right there, both seams to, to the slits, I mean. And make sure that your sole fabric is right sides together. So the right sides of your sole is touching the right sides of the leg fabric. And now I'm going to sew all the way around with a quarter of an inch seam allowance. And I'm going slow here, even though I sped up the video here, I am going slow because I want to make sure I get a nice clean line and I will back stitch where I met or I first began the stitch so now we're gonna turn them right side out like I did with the other one and I like to use my chopstick to help me out and push it through Get that chopstick in the very point there. Make sure it sticks out because this foot is so adorable. It's like a little elf's foot. And you want to see that little point detail. And now the fun part, some stuffing. So the first thing you're going to do is put in some stuffing a little bit at a time. And what you want to do is stuff the point of the foot, like the very pointing part right here and get that stuffing there. That's the furthest point, so you want to get the stuffing in there first. Now, we're going to take these feet and these legs and we're going to fold that we're going to put them inside, right? So the point of the foot is going and touching the outer body there. And I'm going to line up the edge of this leg with that seam right there. I'm gonna use two pins to hold it in place. And again, the point of the foot is touching the outer body on the inside. Now I'm gonna take this round bottom and I'm going to fit it all the way around by pinning.
take your time as you even pass over the legs there. I'm using the same pins that I have pinned the legs with because I really hate sewing with a bunch of pins, even though we need them. And now you're gonna sew all the way around with about a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So I'm really taking my time here. I'm stopping a lot. I'm not doing one quick sewing. I'm just making sure I grab everything and it's as neat as possible as I can make it. And I'm gonna backstitch where I first began sewing. And now the fun part, turn this right side out. This cute mama's coming together, I love her legs and that pattern. Looking cute. Okay, so what I like to do is take my scrap fabrics and start stuffing about half of it with all my scraps first because this creates a lot of weight and the gnome really sits better and, and doesn't topple over. But you can use plastic pellets or just plain stuffing. And then I finished it off with stuffing. So now I have a double threaded needle and I am just doing a quick basting stitch all the way around. And you're gonna see how I just pull it and it scrunches closed. I'm just gonna go around a little bit more until it stays closed and then I'm gonna do an end off stitch. So I'm gonna pull through and put it inside and through the loop and again twice Actually, I'm tripling it just so it doesn't come apart. And now to put together the hat, you're gonna put the two triangle fabrics right sides together and back stitching on the ends, you're just gonna sew the sides. So that was quick, I'm done. And what you're gonna do is fold over about an inch of a hem and give it a good press. I'm using a ham here, a pressing ham, just to help me out, but you don't need it. And on the ends, you're just gonna keep folding over about an inch and ironing. So right there, you just fold it on the end. Because this isn't plain cotton, it's not staying, so I use the pin, but if you're using cotton, it's probably gonna stay and you most likely don't need a pin, but you can pin it. And now you're gonna sew all the way around, tacking down that hem. Pivoting on the corner there. Now turn it right side out and you have this really simple, adorable hat. And I am using my chopstick to get that point pointy. All right, look how cute, fit it on your gnome. And yes, it's supposed to be a little large. So now let's start the nose. I'm doing a quick basting stitch all the way around the circle pattern. Really quick, doesn't even have to be neat, just go all the way around. And now you're going to stuff it. The more you stuff it, the rounder and nicer it will be without any puckers. So notice how I'm kind of like holding it like a cup. It really helps hold it all together. All right, now I'm gonna kind of go around again, doing some quick basting stitches, and now I'm gonna close it off. See how you kind of could mold it and just squeeze it and just make it nice and perfect. And I'm gonna tie it off on the back, going in all different directions, so it stays put. Here we go, how cute. Trim off the thread, and now with the glue gun, you can sew it on, but I figure I'm never washing my gnome, so glue is totally fine, but it's your choice if you sew it on. So now I'm taking measurements for this mustache and sort of beard. This is the fun part. Not only creating this, but finding the coordinating or fun colored, whatever you love, yarn. 
and I just keep wrapping it around. And now I'm going to tie it in the center with a double yarn and double knot. Glue it right into place. And I want mine thicker, so I'm going to repeat this process and glue another one on. See, like I want more, but you can leave yours thin. I just want a lot of yarn because <laughs> I love that look. And now I'm cutting open the loops at the end. How cute is she coming along? Now what I'd like to do is put a little glue right there to hold that hat right above the nose. Again, you can make a little sewing tack if you prefer to do that. And I still want more yarn. I want a lot of hair here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now instead is make this shorter length one and wrap it until I get a nice full sort of like tassel. And this time I'm gonna tie my yarn on the end and just glue that right in place. Now you can keep doing this if you want to keep adding more and more um, sort of hair or yarn but I think that's enough for Bane. I'll add another one on the other side to make it even. Cute so far. And then you can go ahead and have fun and give it a haircut. Leave it shaggy, make it shorter on the ends, whatever you want. Cause like I always say, you're the designer here. So for the hands, these are right sides together. You're gonna sew all the way around, back stitching on the ends there. There we go back stitch and work your way around a quarter of an inch seam allowance. So now to make this turn much better around the um, curves, I cut notches. And you'll see when you turn it around, the fabric won't be pointed and jagged. So get close to your seam, but don't cut the seam. And now you're gonna turn them around. So I definitely need the chopstick to get that little thumb out. And we're gonna stuff it up. I'm gonna use the chopstick to try to push some of the stuffing into the thumb there. And I think a little bit more stuffing. Now I'm gonna fold this over and just give it a running stitch right across. So what I did is I'm using some button thread and I am going to create the little fingers here. So with a double knot at the end, I put the thread through and I'm pulling. And notice when you pull, the finger just automatically forms. I'm gonna do it twice so it's nice and tight. And then I'm gonna go through to another area there. I'm just gonna add like, make three fingers by making two of these lines. Well, you could add as many fingers as you want. And then I'm gonna go into the center and create a little end off stitch right there. And that's when you put your needle through the loop and pull it and it creates an automatic knot so it doesn't come out. So now again, you can iron this, but I'm not washing it. So I'm gonna do it the quicker way. I'm gonna figure out where I want this hand and then I'm gonna put some hot glue on there and glue it right into place. And for if you're worried, or for those of you worried, I'm telling you, the glue does not come off the fabric. I'm gonna tack down the hat on the arm there, as well as here, and a little bit in, on the back. She's really coming out so cute.
How adorable. Okay, because she's a mama and she works a lot, she deserves a big flower on her hat. Here we go. Just gluing. I'm putting a lot of glue here so it doesn't fall off. And here we go. How adorable is this mama gnome? And that's it. How easy was this DIY gnome tutorial? So if you love also the pom-poms, I show you here at the end of this video how to make the pom-poms. I'll link the video here as well. And also check out my DIY cute gnome party favors if you really love gnomes so much. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you in the next video.